Good morning. Welcome to the Huntington Presbyterian Church. We extend a special greeting this morning to our visitors. Please sign the guest register in the rear of the sanctuary and fill out a visitor's card located in the pew rack and place it in the offering plate. We're also happy to welcome those who are listening on the radio or internet. Huntington Presbyterian Church is located at 508 Mifflin Street in Huntington, Pennsylvania. Our Sunday worship begins at 10.30 a.m. and is preceded by adult Sunday school at 9 a.m. The Reverend Brett D. Hoover is our pastor. We look forward to welcoming you in person sometime soon. Are there any announcements this morning? Hearing none, we'll have a minute for mission.
Watch and wait for Christ's coming, light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. this candle in hope. We light this candle for peace. We light this candle in joy. To those who live as exiles from home in a dark time, to those enslaved as exiles due to others' oppression. To those who are sin's exiles from their best God-promised selves, the Lord speaks the joy of good news. A reading from Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you with his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing on, as in a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Let us pray. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord is my strength and my might. God has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will stay in that day. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Sing praises to the Lord, for God has done gloriously. Amen. Please stand as we recite the call to worship. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Let your gentleness be evident to all. We rejoice in the hope of Christ's coming. Let us worship God.
join in the prayer of confession. God of salvation, in Christ you have done great things, and our hearts are filled with joy. By your power you lifted us out of the wasteland of sin and brought us with joy and laughter into your kingdom. Salvation is your gift to us. But we confess that often we try to replace your gift with our own efforts. We try to complete what is already perfect. We try to earn what we already have. Forgive us for our foolishness. Help us to focus on your grace. Help us to live grateful lives in return. For Jesus' sake alone. Amen. Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Jesus Christ came among us in great humility, will sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Thanks be to God. Amen. Jesus Christ, we have received God's forgiveness, and as people forgiven, we are called to forgive others, showing them not only our grace, but the grace of Christ. As you pass Christ's peace this morning, do so with that spirit of forgiveness and love, knowing that as you pass the peace of Christ, you are sharing the peace of Christ. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let's pass Christ's peace. I know you already played. Well, uh, at this time, I'd invite our, uh, our young disciples, our young people, to come down for a time of sharing. Hey, James. Can I... You're not allowed to make a noise. No? Can, I, can I have a high five, though? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, so that, that looks like a remote, huh? Uh-huh. Oh. Oh, okay. Hi, Tyler. Hey. Hey, guys, can I have I-5? Yeah, I can I have I-5? Oh, yeah, good job. Oh, that's great. How are you guys doing? Good? Good? Are you excited? There's a special holiday coming up soon. It's Christmas, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Christmas Eve is one week from now. Are you excited? Yeah, Christmas Eve, yeah. How many, how many of you have seen Santa Claus? Yeah? Oh, really? Where, where did you see Santa Claus? Oh, at the same place? Yeah? Two times? Wow! Oh, at the school. Oh, wow. Yeah, I saw, I saw him at, at the parade last night. Yeah? I went to a Christmas party and I saw Santa Claus. Whoa! Oh, yeah? Well, um, what, okay, now, does anybody know what this is? A feather. A feather, yeah. You know, of some sort, right, right. This is actually, uh, this is, it's called a quill. You see that little sharp thing on the end? What does it do? That's right. Yeah, th this uh, before uh, before they had uh, what what people call fountain pens. This is how they would write. They they they'd take a quill and dip it in. Uh, now, uh, one of my favorite um, uh, Christmas songs uh, uh, is about Santa Claus, and Santa Claus uh, does something. He has a list, and what does he do with the list? He, 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 he yeah. Checks, he checks your naughty and your naughty. Yeah. That's right. That's right. 
Yeah. Okay. If they're not, if they're naughty, they get cold. That's like you get something, you get cold, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so I like to think when Santa's checking his list, he uses like something like this. He uses a quill, right? And he, he has his list, his piece of paper here with all the names. And how many times does he check his list? Twice. Twice. Not three times, not one time. He checks it twice. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, we're going to read a passage from Scripture where uh, in the Bible we have a, a checklist of a th- a things that we, uh, that we should be doing. And you see, have a little list here. And we want, we want to make sure during Christmas time that we have, we have good lists and make sure that we check things off. What does that say? This says, be joyful always. Wait, what does that say? We'll get there. I know what joyful means. Yeah, what does joyful mean? Well, oh, yeah, what? yeah, yeah. It's it's like that. Like you have a a, a good, a deep inner happiness. That's joyful. When you're angry, you can find something happy. Yeah, that's right. When you're angry, you can find something happy. Now, the second the second one is pray continually. What does that mean? No, you're not allowed to do silly business during prayer. You have to be serious. <laughs> you have to buy a Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, well, pray continue. How, how many of you guys say, say uh, prayers before you go to sleep at night? Yeah, we need to make sure that we remember that we, we pray and that we, we, we pray. Now, the last one, give thanks in all things. Yeah. And you're supposed to say what? Thank you. Well, God gives us so many things, so many things that we enjoy. Yeah. One at a time, one at a time. Yeah. Well, we're supposed to be thankful and give thanks for all things. Wait. I know something very important. What's very important? When you're at church, and when you do daily business at church, you won't get toys. Oh, if you do silly business at church, you won't get toys. Everybody remember that. Everybody remember that. Can we have a word of prayer together? Let's pray together. Uh, God, uh, we know that this is such a busy time of year, and it's also an exciting time of year. But uh, help us to remember to do those, uh, those simple things. Help us to remember to be joyful, to pray, and to give thanks for all that you give us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. That was, that was good. It, it's always great. Uh, um, I can tell when Anthony is really getting into it because I, I feel the vibrations on my back when I'm sitting up here that, from that from that powerful. One. Thank you, Anthony, for for offering your gifts to us and in, in worship uh, in worship this Sunday. Um, would you all please uh, join with me in prayer as we prepare our hearts to receive God's word? Let's pray together. God of love and power, you are revealed to us in your word in accounts of prophecy and fulfillment that direct our attention to Jesus Christ. Illumine us now as we hear your word proclaimed, that we may open our hearts to him, yearn for his coming in glory, and serve him with joy. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. May God himself the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I've heard uh, many people say that that coming to worship is a uh, renewing and some even say relaxing experience. I think that would depend on the Sunday, certainly. And while I always hope that uh, your, your, uh, your uh, um, uh, experience here does renew your faith, I'm about to say something that might interfere with your peace and relaxation. Did you know that it's officially one week until Christmas Eve? It's eight days until Christmas, and, and you know, it seems like this Advent season has gone by so quickly, and I blame Christmas Eve falling on a Sunday for that. It seems like everything has been going so fast, and there are so many things that I'm struggling to accomplish that Melissa and I are struggling to accomplish. Just last night, Melissa, God bless her, she spent like two hours on the computer trying to uh, apply coupon codes to, to the Snapfish website uh, so that she could get prints, at a, uh, prints of pictures at a discount rate. Two hours. She did it, though. We saved 50 cents. <laughs> no, <laughs> she's shaking her head. I mean, she's, uh, I'll pay for that one later, but it was, it was, it was good. It, it, but so there are so many things that we're trying to accomplish before it's too late, and, and not only trying to order these last-minute uh, photos, but we're also trying to organize our visits with friends and family. When are they coming to us? When are we going to them? We're figuring out last-minute food preparations, last-minute gifts, and whenever things start to get really, really busy, I tend to do what most people do. I make lists. Anybody else here a list maker? Yeah, ma ma yeah, yeah. I make lists, and uh, you know, you do you do your list of what needs to get done, and you know, uh, it gives you a sense of accomplishment, doesn't it? Whenever you 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 fulfill something on the list, you get to cross it off, and I like to do it a bunch of times, like put up a bunch of lines through. It's like, yes, I'm done. Yes. But it gives you that sense of accomplishment and, and progress. That it, it gives you a sense of order in the chaos as, the, as things are coming down to the wire. So what, what does your to-do list look like? What, what, what items are on your to-do list? What's, what's actually listed there? Whenever I make those lists, you know what, what always surprises me is how much of the list is taken up by stuff that I do all the time. Like the, just the little everyday stuff I put on that list. Maybe it's to give me a little filler so that when I, cro I have something else to cross off. Maybe, maybe it's, it's that. But you know what I actually had on my list this week? Write sermon. I do that every week, you know. It's, it's like, why, why would I need to put that on a list? It's, it's, uh, it's almost as if, um, uh, you know, when, when something special is going on, when we feel like that we are flooded with, uh, with new things, different things, that we are so busy, what we really need are the reminders to do the ordinary things. That's what we really need, the reminders to do the ordinary stuff. Things that are important for everyday life, but if we're not careful about them, they can fall off of our plates. We can completely forget about them. And our reading today contains some of the last words that, that Paul writes in his letter to the uh, Christians living in the city of Thessalonica. You can say that five times fast, the Thessalonica. I almost didn't say it there. And it reads almost like a to-do list, doesn't it? Well, especially at the beginning, he's listing these things. He's saying, remember to be joyful always. 
Remember to pray continually. Remember to give thanks in all circumstances. And like many items on our own lists, these are important things that we should probably be doing regularly. They're important things, but they're also so difficult. They're important, but when things get busy or chaotic, sometimes they can fall off our plates. Now, the first item on this list is to be joyful always. That's easy, right? Be joyful always. When, when, uh, when the ham is burning on Christmas Day and, you know, the potatoes aren't quite done yet and, you know, you have, uh, you know, kids screaming with excitement because they're ready to tear into that wrapping paper, be joyful. Be joyful. I think this is also a tough one because at times we can, we can confuse two very different ideas. We can confuse the idea of happiness with the idea of joy. We can confuse happiness and joy. And sometimes we use those things interchangeably, but from a biblical perspective, they're different. Joy and happiness are different. You see, happiness is connected with your circumstances. It's that feeling that you get when things around you are going very well, at least to your best of your definition of going well. If things are going well, you tend to be happy. And you can probably think of a number of examples of things that make you happy, especially around this time of year. Uh, for me, you know, the, the, the stuff around Christmas Day is usually where I'm, I'm happy, happiest. It will just be me, Tyler, and my, Melissa. We'll be re- relaxing at home, opening presents. And it's the one day a year where Melissa says I can eat cookies for breakfast. <laughs> I tried that the other day, and she scolded me. That's twice now. She's, oh, man, I'm in trouble after this. I'm going to have the sermon last a little bit longer now. And for dinner, but dinner is the, really the highlight, we have some of my favorites, uh, ham. I, I love ham and uh, uh, cheesy potatoes, this thing, this wonderful thing that Melissa makes. See, I'm trying to earn points again. Uh, this wonderful uh, dish that Melissa makes, cheesy potatoes. And it's such a happy time. Christmas is wonderful. It's very enjoyable, but it lasts a day. Christmas lasts one day. Things change. That happiness is temporal. It will eventually Go away when the circumstances change. Joy is something else. In some ways, joy is connected to the idea of peace that we talked about last week. See, if peace is sort of our our, our state of internal contentment, then joy is the condition that that contentment puts us in. So joy, it isn't really based on your circumstances in life. That's not not where we find joy. Uh, Let me give you an example. When Christmas is over and we're cleaning up all the wrapping paper that we've torn apart and we're getting ready to go back to normal life, I would definitely say that I am less happy. But there's a deeper joy that's still there because I know that the love that was present at Christmas will be there at other times too and we'll still be able to share it. Now, the calling to be joyful doesn't mean that we're always happy. But it does mean that we make the intentional effort to understand our experiences in the light of our hope, the hope of our faith. It means believing that in the end, our joy in Jesus Christ will overcome any sorrow and disappointment that we're facing now. Uh, A New Testament scholar named uh, Leon Morris had a great characterization of the joy of these early Christians to whom Paul is writing. Uh, And they faced some pretty hard circumstances in life. But but listen to to how Morris uh, understood their joy. They thought more of their Lord than their difficulties, more of their spiritual riches in Christ than of their poverty on earth, more of the glorious future when Christ would come than their unhappy past. That kind of perspective, it won't develop by itself. Cultivating joy requires us to actively nurture our hope, the hope of our faith. Now, the next item on this to-do list, uh, oh, actually, the next two items I'll I'll address very briefly here. Uh, The the very next point is to pray continually. Pray continually. Pray continually. Um, now, I, I always think that this is kind of interesting because when some people read this, they want to take it with the absolute literal form that praying continually means you literally pray all the time. Uh, that would make uh, the rest of life a little difficult. I kind of imagine heart surgeons uh, you know, praying continually. I think some would. My goodness, I couldn't imagine doing something like that. But if you, if you spend all, literally all of your time in prayer, I don't know how much else you would get accomplished. I think Paul is getting at something else here. 
what Paul is saying is for us to intentionally cultivate a sense of God's nearness. See, prayer is conversation with God. The more we talk to somebody, the more we interact with someone, the closer we tend to feel with, uh, to them, the, the closer and the deeper the relationship is to us. And most of us strive for that feeling of nearness with God when we come up on hard times. We want assurance and comfort. We want something to, to give us a sense of hope. But Paul is saying, make an effort to invite God in your everyday life. Not just when things are going badly, but when things are going well, too. Invite God into the everyday parts of your life so you can experience joy and peace that come from knowing that God is near you, that God is present with you. But the final item on the list is to give thanks in all circumstances. Now, this is a really important point. Paul doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances. He doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances. He says give thanks in all circumstances. Sometimes our circumstances are truly terrible. And sometimes we suffer through real evil. And we do not give thanks for evil things. Because evil things don't have their origin in God. We don't give thanks for all circumstances. We give thanks in all circumstances. As we endure hardships, we endure them in faith. Faith that God is somehow able to take the darkness we experience, the evil that we encounter, and somehow turn it to good. That is a real deep trust in God's future goodness future goodness that he has in store for us. We give thanks in all circumstances. We give thanks as a mindful attitude of gratitude, not just for what we currently have, but for what God has promised for us in our future. See, I I don't think you can be a joyful person if you're an ungrateful person. In fact, I think in in my experience at least, ungrateful people are kind of without exception miserable and miserable to be around. A grateful heart is deeply connected to our experience of joy. So here's the big question for us today. Do any of these things have a place on your to-do list? Are we striving to be joyful? Are we intentionally meditating on God's nearness? Are we practicing faith, uh, thankfulness? Or are we letting the urgent things of the holiday season crowd out the important things of our life with God? Well, I think it's pretty safe to say that we are incredibly lucky or blessed that God doesn't operate like Santa Claus. We talked a little bit about that in the, in the children's ser- service uh, because Santa has a list too. He has a list, right? And on that list, you're either... Well, the kids know. You're naughty or nice. You get presents or coal. And where you fall on that scale determines the outcome. I've never gotten coal, though I know I've not been exactly nice all the time. That would be kind of neat, getting just a big lump of uh, Well, I, I could never do that as even a joke gift. That would be too cruel. But uh, if you've seen TV, uh, uh, on TV right now, there are these great commercials uh, about how being on the naughty list isn't an option. Have you all seen that? Uh, and there are these great little circumstances that these kids find themselves in. Like, uh, I, I like one, uh, you know, the new Star Wars movie is out. And there, there's a kid in a Kylo Ren mask vacuuming. And he's just there vacuuming in this mask. And then it just says, you know, the naughty list is not an option. Uh, but my absolute favorite one, <laughs> these two kids are, uh, are, you know, uh, are messing around. And uh, w- one kid is like uh, um, uh, sweeping up a, a broken uh, vase. And then another one is building a new vase out of Legos and then puts the Lego vase in place of the broken one. I love, I love that one. That, that's great. But the thing about, uh, the thing about Santa Claus and, uh, and, and his list is that Santa Claus doesn't actually do much to help you be nice. He doesn't really do much on that, on that front. I think, I think you could possibly say that the threat of coal might serve as good motivation for you to be nice or at least avoid being naughty. But Santa isn't really trying to help us out much. He might be cheering for us. He might be earnestly hoping that we be nice so that we get presents. Yet in the end, he really is just a scorekeeper. He's just a referee. 
So how is God different from Santa Claus? Well, first, he actually helps us do these important things. And you can see that in verses 23 and 24. God moves in our hearts. He works a change in us so that we are drawn closer and closer to him, so that we become more and more like him in the way that we show love to others. You could say that God is actually actively coaching us. He shows us how to be joyful by reminding us where true joy is found. He comes near to us in sacred moments, assuring us that he's present. He humbles our pride and blesses us beyond measure to inspire thankfulness. And God is also different from Santa in one other significant way. He shows us forgiveness and patience, even when we don't check everything off of this list. But the, but the greatest blessings come when we open the doors of our hearts wider for God to work in us, when we strive to be joyful as we pray continually, as we give thanks in all circumstances. These things can, in a way, clear the runway for God's grace to land in our hearts. So don't let them fall off your plate this season. Don't let the urgent matters of this time of year crowd out the important things. Be intentional about doing this stuff, and you'll experience a truer and deeper joy this Christmas and beyond. Amen. I invite us to stand as we are able and sing our next hymn, a hymn that reminds us uh, the, the, the I, I guess you could say, the uh, joys of having a good prayer relationship. Uh, hymn number 403, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
You may be seated. And now is the time when we can come together and affirm our faith, the faith that nurtures our hope, uh, the faith that inspires us to joy. We will affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, if you do not know the Creed, you can uh, find it on page 14 of the Blue Hymnal in the very beginning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today is a special day in the life of our church for, uh, for so many reasons. Uh, today we are welcoming several people into, uh, into membership in our, in our congregation. Uh, I'd invite those folks to come forward and uh, come, down, uh, come down here as we uh, share in a time of prayer and, and welcome for these new folks. Come on down. Don't be shy. Like I said, this, this won't be the last time you get embarrassed in church. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. You know what? Tyler is sleeping right now. <laughs> and he's so hard to take. You know, at, with naps, we always tiptoe around the house. But look at him. He's, okay. What? Kids are fun. Well, uh, well, we're so uh, we are indeed so joyful as a as a congregation to be welcoming you all into into membership, and uh, I'm going to be asking you a few questions. And uh, as a congregation, we're going to pledge our support to uh, to nurture and encourage your faith. But uh, uh, for now. Hear these words from Scripture. As many of you were baptized into Christ, you have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. All of you are in Christ Jesus. Sisters and brothers in Christ, our baptism is a sign of our seal and of our cleansing, uh, seal and our cleansing of sin and of our being grafted into Christ. Through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Christ, the power of sin was broken and God's kingdom entered our world. Through baptism, we are made citizens of God's kingdom and freed from the bondage of sin. And let us celebrate that freedom and redemption through the renewal of the promises that we made at our baptism. I ask you, therefore, once again to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, say, I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, say, I will with God's help. We have confessed our faith as a church with the words of the Apostles' Creed just before. And now I would like to ask a question to you, the members of this congregation. These folks have responded to God's call in their life and have now pledged uh, their faith and are about to pledge their service and dedication to this congregation. Will you as members of this church accept their service, surround them with your love and prayers, encourage them in their discipleship? If so, say, we will with God's help. <laughs> Since you have publicly professed your faith, will you be a faithful member of this congregation? Will you share in its worship and ministry? 
through your prayers, your gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. If so, say, I will with God's help. Let's all pray together. Let's pray. Holy God, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing to add to our our number brothers and sisters in faith. Together may we live in your spirit and so love one another that we may have the mind of Christ our Lord, to whom we give glory and honor forever. And ever-living God, guard these your servants with your protecting hand, and let your Holy Spirit be with them forever. Lead them to know and obey your word that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you forever in the life to come. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Congratulations on becoming uh, members of the Huntington Presbyterian Church. Let's welcome them uh, appropriately. (laughs) Congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Welcome. All right. Thank you all so much. And now, uh, as, a, as a way of announcement, if you didn't know already, there, there will be a, a reception following the, the worship service downstairs. Everybody is invited. Uh, uh, the folks who just joined our congregation uh, will, will be there, and you can, you can say hello and uh, uh, congratulate them or maybe, uh, maybe warn them. That you could you could do you could do that too, uh, but we're we're just so joyful to uh, to have uh, these new folks in in our midst. So praise be to God for uh, for how He's uh, moving in our lives. I knew one day I would knock that over. And that day is today. Uh, it's always appropriate whenever we uh, renew, uh, renew our commitment to each other as a congregation, whenever we welcome new people into the church, that, uh, we remember, that we remember our calling to dedicate ourselves to the Lord's service. That's what we do in our offering. We dedicate ourselves anew to serving God and to committing all that we have to his care. Joyful people are generous people, and generous people are joyful. And expressing our thanks and reliance on God, let us present all that we are and all that we have for his service. With that, would the ushers come forward to receive our tithes and offerings?
Let us pray. With joy for all you have blessed us with and in joyful anticipation of all you are capable of doing, we give to you these gifts. Use them and us for your glory and praise. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, now is the time when we can share our joys and concerns with one another as a, as a family of faith. Uh, does anybody have any joys or concerns that they would like to lift up this morning? Oh, Don? I think we have a an early Christmas present, I hope. Our daughter-in-law, Lenore, you know, had lung cancer stage four. And in the treatment, it seems to be working. And the doctor said, well, don't need to come back this year. We'll look at you sometime next year, which I think is a wonderful blessing. It's not over yet, but it's getting better. Thank you. Oh, we pray. Yeah. We praise God for that great news. Are there other joys or concerns? All right, let's turn to God in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in Jesus Christ, you give us access to a joy that nothing in this world can touch. We thank you that in Jesus Christ, in the promise of a fully restored relationship with you and a calling to serve you in your world, we also have the hope of the redemption of all creation. We have a hope that gives us peace as we face troubling times and also fills us with an immeasurable joy. Lord, help us to discover the difference between joy and happiness. Help us to claim our joy, even in circumstances that aren't happy. Give us the faith to see your perspective in our lives and in history. Give us the faith to believe that even in dark circumstances, you are still with us and that you are working something wonderful and beautiful for us. Lord, also guide us this season. Guide us in expressing joy for all that you have given us. Joy at the great news of medical treatments that are producing wonderful results. Joy in the blessings and comforts that you have given us at this time and in this land. Joy that comes from those great peaceful moments in our family where maybe we have a few quiet moments of joy around the Christmas tree. Lord, may we always be thankful for the blessings that you give us. May our hearts always sing with joy for what you have given us in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now invite us to stand as we are able and sing our final hymn, hymn number 40 from the blue hymnal, Joy to the World.
reminder, there is a reception with uh, lots of good food uh, downstairs. So, uh, I mean, we all have to eat, and it's right here. So you don't have to go very far for it. Um, uh, just really quick, I'd like us to say a blessing over the food. That way, when you go downstairs, you can get right to eating. And that's something to be joyful about. Let's pray together. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for, uh, for these wonderful people that you have called into our midst. And we thank you for the wonderful people who have prepared the food that we are about to enjoy. And we thank you for being the blessing behind the food and the source of all of our joy. We ask that you would bless our fellowship, that we may see in each other a reflection of your love and grace for us in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray now. Amen. And now as you go forth from, from this place, hopefully to downstairs, uh, but eventually out into the world, it's my hope that you remember the important things and that you prioritize the important things even as you shuffle through the urgent things of this time of year. Remember to be joyful always. Remember to pray continually. And remember to give thanks in all circumstances. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest with each and every one of you, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.